Hey guys, this is Rachel. I'm here again on the Ink Pen Authors with another vlog. And this time, it's not early in the morning. I'm not going to be as sleepy, and I'll probably talk way too fast. So I'm going to try to be a bit more, a bit less, whatever, dull, but not talk too fast, because I tend to do, this, to do that. This is just joyful, isn't it? Okay, so basically I asked you guys questions, so I'm going to start by answering your questions. Good thing to do. And then I will give you a couple updates on a few things. So the first question is from Esther. And she says, after Anon Sir Anon, what will be next? Currently, I have been kind of going through some of the books that I have halfway started, halfway finished, however you want to say it. And looking at those, um, several people have asked about my children's books. There's the Scarlet Gypsy song. Um, a Mother for the Seasonings, which is very episodic, but not terrible. Um, there's Coddleston Pie, The Baby. There's quite a few that I need to either overhaul or finish. So I'm not sure quite whether I should take out one of those, because I do want to publish a children's book at some point. Um, currently, though, I actually, it's kind of secret, but I think I may have officially started the next Vivian Farnham mystery which is tentatively titled Scotch the Snakes, which is from a Shakespeare quote. Um, and I'm probably butchering this, but it says, we, what? Yeah, we haven't killed them. We've only scotched the snakes, which I suppose means set them drunk, which probably has nothing to do with the mystery, but you never know. So <laughs> I've started that pretty much. I just have like a couple pages and I just wrote them out couple days ago so I'm still feeling the way feeling my way through that story so probably though it'll be another Vivian Farnham mystery or finishing one of my children's projects I don't see starting another new book entirely when I have so many really good starts you know at the side waiting their turn um, Abby asked what my favorite hobby is besides writing um, writing for me isn't really a hobby it's something I do something I would do even if I wasn't publishing just because it really, it's a passion of mine, and it's how I process stuff. I don't write about the actual stuff, I just write. And I write myself back into a good humor, and it's great. Um, my favorite hobby, though, writing aside, would probably be cooking. I love gourmet cooking. I love cooking shows. I would love to be a food blogger someday, probably when I have my own house. That would be really fun. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of my biggest hobbies. Abby also asked, which story is my favorite that I've plotted or thought out? And this is super hard for me because I really, I don't write a story unless I love it. Um, of course, Fly Away Home has a good place in my heart because of the characters. Um, but story-wise, probably the strongest story I've plotted out, you know, so far is one I actually haven't written. It's Au Contraire, which is a historical fiction set in the French Revolution. And I have that like plotted out so amazingly. But I just kind of plotted it so much I took all the fun out of it. So I'm not even sure I'm ever gonna write it, but I've got that like on my desk sitting there <laughs> waiting <laughs> all the pages with all the chapters and stuff set up. So I don't know if that'll ever happen. I want it to, but I need further research. Like I really dislike trying to start something. I have a really good idea for like a spy, World War II spy novel, but I don't, like the characters, I love them, but I don't want to start until I've researched that really well because I need to do it justice. So probably actually my favorite book currently is Anon Sir Anon simply because it's finally in fighting trim and I'm excited to share it with everyone. So, you know, that answer is always changing. And Abby also asked my thoughts on getting famous, if I'd like to be famous or just well-loved by a few people. Um, I mean, I don't know. Being loved by a few people, being loved by a lot of people. I wouldn't mind being famous, but I don't think that's exactly going to happen because I'm very much, I, I kind of dance to my own tune as far as that goes. I don't always write what's popular. I write what I want to read, what I want to write, and whoever loves it, loves it. So that could end me famous someday. It could be suicide to my career. I don't know, but I don't really care. And um, 
so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind being famous. I don't exactly see that happening, but if you guys are really really great and talk to all your friends and all your family about my books someday in the very distant future, that could possibly happen. But you know, I'm good with this for now. I love you guys. Tabitha asked about no mere mortals. Okay. For those of you who are new to the blog, this is a story about the very selfish theater critic, super well-dressed guy. I have a weakness for super well-dressed men. So his name is Gregory Abbott, and he inherits a little deaf girl. And um, basically, that story is actually way better than I thought it was, but it needs plot additions. I, I tend to be very weak on the plot when I when I start a project. I'm like the characters and the setting and I love it and I write it and then I get stuck. I think No Mere Mortals had probably fifteen or twenty thousand words and it was a great start and I actually was just flipping through my Google Drive file when I was at Starbucks the other day. And it has some good stuff. So hopefully that will be finished someday. It's a contemporary story. And so, you know, like currently I'm working on the Vivian Farnham series, and so I might pause midway in that, but I definitely want to keep the momentum going and give readers a few books with Vivian Farnham. Um, Skylar asked about listening music. What music can I listen to when I'm writing? And really, as much as I love music with lyrics, my music choices are super limited um, when I'm writing because I can't listen to books that have books what am I even saying? I can't listen to music that has lyrics. I guess there's just too many words and they're all like piling in my head and I'm just like, shut up! Like the little uh, pelican thing on Finding Nemo. Yeah, good movie. I can't wait for Finding Dory. That should be good. But anyway, yeah, so my favorite music to listen to are soundtracks. Um, I have no idea what this movie is, but Road to Perdition has a really great soundtrack. I love the music to Schindler's List. Um, the music to Saving Mr. Banks, Miss Potter, stuff like that. Um, I think it's Thomas Newman, and I love Dario Marianelli. Um, the only music that I can actually listen to that has lyrics is Kate Rusby. She's English folk, which is calmer than Irish folk. It's not quite so plaintive. It's a little funnier. And she just has the best voice. It's kind of like this husky voice with a great accent. And so... Like, unless I'm listening to it, it doesn't exactly calculate or compute as, like, English in my ears, so it doesn't distract me. But it's really, really beautiful, and you should listen to her. She's amazing. I have two of her albums, and I bought them on a whim because I was looking for Scarborough Fair one time, and I came across a version of hers on YouTube, and it was awesome. So quick plug for Kate Rusby. Now, Abby, this time with an E, asked whether I like pumpkin pie or apple pie better, and I would definitely say apple pie. But I'm not a huge pie person in general. I just, there's so much darn work. Like, they're they're gratifying to make, I guess, because they look good, but they're, like, you got to make the crust, and then you got to roll out the crust, and it always sticks and tears, and it never looks as amazing as I wish it could, but apple pie a la mode is excellent, so sometimes I'll do it, and we have the best crust recipe, so it's really good. Um, it has, like, vinegar and eggs and weird stuff in it, but it tastes amazing. Then she also asked about the names of Vivi Farnham and Dr. Breen and where they came from. Well, Vivi just came from thinking, like, something in Farnham, something in Farnham. What would work with Farnham? Oh, Vivi. And then I don't like the name Vivian. It sounds I've known too many old ladies with the name Vivian. So even though it's probably, like, period correct, you know, for the 30s, I didn't really want to go there. So I was thinking Vivi, Vivi depending on how you say it, it could come from Genevieve, and Genevieve is a nice name, I like it, and Genevieve Langley, you know, that's where her name came from, just totally what would sound good with Farnham, also, it's extremely easy to type, and I, I'm not even kidding when I say that, that typing ease is a big thing for me when naming characters, because if it's like all over the keyboard, like, heaven forbid I ever write somebody with a name that begins with Q, because I've got to like stretch my pinky like way over there in the corner of the keyboard, and it's just annoying, so, yeah, that was where Vivi came from. Farnham actually had a really funny, <laughs> very funny birth, the name, because I work in politics with a bunch of kids. So I was in a van full of kids, and we were going door to door and stuff like that. And then one of the kids was, I could have sworn, he said that his grandfather's name was Orville Farnham. 
and I remember he, we were talking about how weird of a name that was, and I was like, yeah, that's a really strange name, and I remember thinking, hey, it sounds like the popcorn guy, you know, like Orville Redenbacher, or Reich, Reich, Reichenbach, <laughs> that's the Sherlock episode, no, Red, Orville Redenbach, whatever, the popcorn dude, his name is Orville, so that's why I remember that name, and then months later, I was thinking about a name that was kind of like old-fashioned, a little crotchety, um, but you know, still, still a dignified name, and I was like, Orville Farnham, yeah, that, that sounds like a good name, and then, I don't remember why, but I messaged Nathan, and I was like, hey, so are you the one whose granddad was named Orville Farnham, and he was like, no, and I was like, do you remember whose granddad was named Orville Farnham, and he was like, I have never heard the name in my life, so I don't even know how I got that name, but hey, funny story, and as for Breen, I think it was just a good, solid name. I liked it, because it was actually from another kid I've worked with, with in politics. Her name was Hannah Breen. She was really sweet. I was scrolling through Facebook one day. I'm like, Breen, Hannah Breen, Dr. Breen, Dr. Breen. What would Dr. Breen be like? And then I just added him in as Farnham's friend. So, yeah, none, none of these names have special meanings. They're not particularly special names, except that they belong to the characters. So, I, I'm super easy when it comes to that. Like, I, I don't stress over having a name that means man of the dark water who fights with a fork in his left hand to save the woman he loves from the Gittle schnattel schnipe or whatever sorry quick like fantasy rage moment there um sarah asked what authors have influenced my writing most um okay not gonna lie i would have to say Louisa May Alcott, because I've read Little Women so many times, and uh, not even her writing style so much, but definitely, like, she probably influenced my children's books more, like her Eight Cousins, Rose and Bloom. A few of her lighter, less well-known books are ones that have affected me, Little Men. Um, she, she was the one who taught me that I can handle a large cast of characters, and that writing big families or lots of children or whatever is possible. Um, then Edith Nesbitt, who is most famous for the Railway Children and the Treasure Seekers. I love her writing. Um, then definitely P.G. Woodhouse, sort of accidentally. I don't try to imitate him. I think Charles Dickens has probably had some, some effect. Really, I think it's like what I took away from most of these authors is their characters, their way of portraying characters. Um, because that's what I'm best at, is creating people and relationships and things like that. So, you know, I, I would say that. Somebody, the lady who was cutting my hair was like, so, you know, who would you say your writing style is like? And I was sitting there like, oh, man, I don't know. I forget what I told her. Something, somebody in a combination of, like, P.G. Woodhouse and somebody, I don't even remember. But... That's not even fair. I need I need to figure this out. People ask these questions, and I should have answers, so I'm very sorry, Sarah. Bad answer for you. Um, when I begin a book, how do I do it? Well, I don't outline. I Like I said earlier, I tried outline, and it was horrible. It killed my inspiration. So I guess you could say I'm a pantser. I'm trying to get better at planning. I definitely want to make sure I have good a good plot and for mysteries that's super important so it does have I, I like using James Scott Bell's lock sequence you have a lead an objective a what was the catastrophe I don't even know you need to have a C and then the K, the K was for a knockout ending somehow a C catastrophe no climax I don't know what it was there was a C in there. Anyway, so, like, it's a series of events that makes for a really strong story, and I, I like it. That's what I used for a non certain on, and I think but it was just in the back of my mind. I didn't, like, sit out and plan it out, really, at all. I kind of, I did have to start being a little more careful as I rewrote because of needing to make sure that they didn't find this clue before talking to this person, or this suspect needed to be mentioned here and here, and, yeah, so that, but usually I just... I get my inspiration in random moments. It'll usually start with a scrap of dialogue or an idea in my head or something random. Like I overheard a conversation. I have I have a thought for a story actually set locally where I live in Virginia, um, and it's called the Green Branding. 
and it was because dad was talking about something and he was like have you heard what was it he said he was talking about some piece of pipe or something something with copper and he was like have you heard about the green branding and I was like no do tell <laughs> and I overheard him talking to somebody and it was some plumbing fixture somehow I don't even know but it got me set thinking about like the green brandy and so it's like a spy ring like these ring of people who have it's like in colonial times and they all wear a copper ring and so sometimes it you can see it has stained their finger green from oxidization and um anyway so I'm kind of I, I need to actually read the spy stories by I want to say it's like Rosanna White or something some some author recently came out with a whole set of books about a spy ring in the colonial era, right when I got this idea, and that always happens. You know the movie Nonstop with Liam Neeson? Yeah, that that was my idea, like a week before the movie came out. I hadn't even heard about it. And the last one, my favorite classic movie actor and actress. I'll be quick. Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck. They're great. They're fabulous. There's there's no one greater. So that's basically all I have for today. Um, as far as news goes, I have begun tentatively the second book in the Vivian Farnham series. Don't forget, Anansar Anon comes out on November 5th. It's going to be amazing. You guys have been such a help already with advanced reviews and cover reveals and things like that. So if you want to be part of the release to do sometime in November, um, drop me a line. Also, um, I have been asked to be interviewed on the HSLDA blog, which is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Which is, is neat because that's like a lot of people, a whole full of people I haven't even tapped. So that's a really good opportunity. So thank you, Charity, for getting me that opportunity. Very excited about it. And yeah, don't forget, October 20th, Jennifer Freitag's Plenilune comes out. You are going to want to read this book. And that's all there is to it because you need to take my word for it. So basically, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'm sorry I've rambled, but you gave me a lot of questions. So I hope you guys have a great time, happy writing, and there's something else I was going to say. I drove through torrential apocalyptic rain today, and it was horrible, and I was shouting at the cars in a British accent, and it was it was all from reading Lord Peter Wimsey Mysteries by Dorothy Sayers. I had just been doing that, and like I drive up, and also you should buy Glow in the Dark nail polish from Walmart. It goes on clear. But it literally glows in the dark and is awesome. So have a great day. Love you guys. And happy writing, like I already said.